Hello Maple fans and in this video I'll be sharing my learnings from 2023 with lots of hints and tips that may help for next year. Please note that these months are based on UK timings but of course can easily be adapted to anywhere else in the world. So last January I took a trip to Batsford Arboretum here in the UK. Um, they've got a really nice selection of trees including this coral bark maple and indeed a paper bark maple. So learning for me there was really that these trees can be attractive in the winter, they really can. Um, you need to pick and choose a little bit perhaps but uh, it's always nice to have some in your collection and here's a lovely lovely sushi kashira which is, is absolutely crazy um, quite an old tree goes all over the place looks magnificent really but uh, nonetheless a really really nice place to visit get some exercise get out and about and collect your thoughts maybe ready for next year so uh, moving on from there in February took a trip down to Dorset in the UK um, this is by Paul, um, lovely location and again surprisingly lesson here really that you know the nursery is still open certainly the one that I visit called Bartholomew's in, in Dorset are still open They there are still plants that little um, tree there is one I actually bought and it, it still means you can have a look it, it's not quite so, so spectacular in the summer months but really good to sort of take a phone with you and do a bit of research and kind of understand what these trees will look like in, in the spring and the summer, I suppose, really, because just looking at some sticks almost isn't uh, the best way of making that decision. And just going on to um, Kingston Lacey here, which is a lovely National Trust property here in the UK. But uh, again, it's not in full swing, really, but nice to see the structure of the trees. Still had a really good day out, little break, little holiday, really. And of course these places are nearly empty as well really so you can get around really early and perhaps it focuses the eye on this particular japanese garden down there the sort of structure of it um, the little outbuilding there it all adds to sort of the uh, the experience really so despite finding some lovely cherry blossom a little bee there um march obviously is you know starts getting excited for maple lovers really um, obviously the daffodils sort of precede the trees sort of leafing out but always good to see um, and visit some nice locations with that. Um, went up to Tatton Park in sort of Manchester way, the sort of more north of the, the of England in the UK, and spotted this garden. So didn't get back there that year, but again, still nice to visit. Um, these can be quite mossy, quite interesting, and it's it's good I think still to go out. And uh, I'm, I'm glad I went for a, a nice day out really. And also, it's a good time to sort of get round and spot some potential places to visit later on in the season if you want to see some fully grown trees and then quickly heading into April uh, this is where things get a little bit more interesting you can see um, my learning there was to sort of like cut off some of the winter dieback it, it's pretty clear at this stage what there is and because the trees haven't leafed out yet um, seemed like a really good idea to make those little amendments really leaving a, a sort of few millimeters above where I cut I suppose just to make sure we don't get more dieback still further but at this stage, it's not really going to generate any more dieback. The the winter frosts are kind of over, to be honest. So a good time to trim away um, before the, the the plants leaf out and sort of conceal what, what what needs to be done, to be honest. So another little lesson there. This is the month that I um, had delivered and installed that fountain. Had my eye on it for quite a while, really. But while well, we're not sort of quite so interested in the plants and haven't many of them haven't quite leafed out yet. It may be a good time to sort of worry about ornaments and the kind of structural nature of the garden as well um, because it all adds the kind of little little bit of japanese theme i suppose and back down here at compton acres again in pauline dorset in the uk uh, lovely to sort of visit garden uh, centers or proper nurseries which i tend to go to um, they're, they're starting to leaf out it, it's quite kind of getting exciting really you have a better chance of seeing what's what and then moving on of course to to feeding so we're still in kind of early april Seems sort of pretty suitable this year, judging on the trees. And just as they start to leaf out, I think that's a great time to feed, to be honest with you. So a lesson there just to hold fire and give them a, a sort of feed that's going to endure and last over the next six months. So this is a slow release specific Acer feed, not just some sort of generic compost because there's far too much nitrogen in some of the ones you buy. So just uh, just uh, taking the bark off there, giving a sprinkle of some feed. And that's definitely sustained the trees all through the growing season. But being in pots, if you don't do that, they they will certainly suffer eventually and, and run out of steam a little bit. So uh, a little bit of work per tree, but uh, nonetheless, well worthwhile. So as I mentioned in some of my previous videos, the winter is actually a really good time to get bargain trees that may be end of season. 
but now we're sort of moving through April uh, and the trees actually leaf out, you can much more clearly see what you're going to get in that sense. They tend to be a very even height at this point because they're kind of all grown onto roughly the same degree. Whereas at the end of the season, you can see actually what the growth rate's going to be like because they progressed at different rates. But nonetheless, lovely to go. Um, lovely place in Mac, um, Matlock that I visit, Packhorse Nurseries. And again, a good time to, to, to make a selection. The choice at this time of year, again, a quick learning is immense um, because it's the start of the season. If you go up later on, you know, they'll still have plenty in a place like this, but they may have sold out some varieties, uh, some cultivars. So again, a really good time to go and have a mooch round. And if you don't buy everything on that visit, well, it's tempting, I know, but a good chance to make some plans, see the growth habits, have a chat with the owners. Um, always good to take advice as well. That's a great learning at this time of year because they'll know they'll be able to help. If you go to a generic garden center, then unfortunately they tend to be sort of sales assistants, not sort of maple fans really. So uh, having some advice can be really, really invaluable. It's also very worthwhile seeing them at this stage because you can see all the different spring colors. So the more you get to know your maples, the more you know how they're going to behave over the full year. And ideally, you know, looking on your phone, looking up on the internet to see autumn colors, etc., to mix and match. But in the spring, it's an absolutely spectacular time of year for Japanese maples. So quite a good time to get out there, have a look. Um, you know, by varieties, we could all land up with sort of the same kind of uh, red leaf maples that are all lovely, but why not mix and match it? Great time to spot ones as well that may be in short supply sometimes. So this is Makai Yatsubusa. Um, though interestingly, because this is a small grower, he's much more able to customize what he grows and what he grafts to demand. Uh, and certainly because this is well publicized in America and things like that, um, they're much more available now. So there's a little beauty there. Um, this tree is probably four or five years old. So again, you know, maybe a small tree if it costs more money, but that's because it's a slow grower. And that's definitely to be expected really. But if you wanted somebody wanted a lot of money for a, a blood good tree, which grows like bilio or a, a, a cereal or something, that wouldn't be uh, very sensible, really. So back to my own garden in May, everything's in sort of full flow, really. Really is a last and, and good time to check your locations. Now, ideally, as I said in a previous video, I would move plants at the end of last season while I remember what, what I did wrong, you know, which ones got burnt, could I move them to a better, more shady location? But nonetheless, it's great to go and move your plants, get out and about to these lovely places, enjoy the azaleas as well, um, because they're, they're Japanese, they're all part of that Japanese garden experience, really. So the spring is absolutely wonderful. Um, a lot of people think of Japanese maples in terms of looking great for their autumn colours, and that's absolutely true, of course it is. But in the spring, they're absolutely gorgeous and more consistent, probably, because uh, weather conditions tend to uh, be very more in the autumn and winter, really. So here, just reflecting on and learnings again, is where I put this particular gate um, onto my house. The difference that's made is absolutely profound. And, and again, that video of how I did this is probably not that appealing to people in some respects. But for me personally, and I think one should really consider that cutting the wind down, blowing through the alleyway, which was like a gale, it really was, has entirely freed up the border behind for more plants. And they've absolutely done so well. So. This time of year, I would say it's a really good time to kind of sort things out, get out there in the garden while it's a bit warmer, do those structural changes, do some moves, um, organize things correctly. Because at the end of the day, if you set things up and you know change the environment to, to, for these trees and make it more hospitable for them, then that can work really well. Um, also checking up on the bamboo there that I planted, which is starting to regrow. You can see there on the right hand side. And that in a couple of three, four years will really, really sort of make a nice screening hedge as well and just improve things no end, to be honest with you. So, you know, many times I said before, my learning this year has been definitely, as always, put the trees where they want to be. But in some senses, you can actually modify the environment in which they live in and they'll do very, very well. Great. Again, this time of year to go out and about. Everything's in leaf. Everything's looking really good. Some trees sort of fade a bit or go a bit more generic later on in the year. But particularly the coral items look a beautiful pink color um, the garnet on the left hand side is in full flow really and was a was a busy month for me really so i managed to move the water barrels behind the wall there down the alley frees up more space in the garden they're not very nice to look at really um, everything's channeled through a drain pipe around the corner here 
so just notch that out and then put that into a you know a drain redirector thing to sort of get the water which is rainwater again oh, another learning really what if the free water is there why not use it ironically it's been so wet this summer in the uk that uh, i haven't really watered it that much and here we are another learning from this year if you if it's taking absolutely ages to to water your plants i was a bit cheeky really i bought this sort of pump mechanism um, runs on sort of batteries but you can get main ones as well and the water flow therefore is, is really very good indeed always always i prefer to use rain water and tap water there's no chlorine in it i don't like the taste of it when i drink it and the plants don't do i don't either in, in my estimation so sort of fresh free rain water is always better in my opinion so here we are into june and this is where, where i think the preparation that people do early on in the year really pays dividends um, because this Asia Asia Cirrus one and Moonrise um, really likes it in this position, whereas the Jordan tends to burn more easily. It's a sort of similar looking tree, but I know this does really well here. So again, because I moved that kind of last year and found a, a good spot for it, then that works very well indeed. Whereas perhaps the Ukugumo behind again left there from last year because it liked that position, so I didn't move it. Um, very pale leaf, really quite a beautiful tree. Looks looks really good. And again, what I've also discovered this year as well is that if you're going to plant things in the ground, have a really good think about it first because I planted a couple of other trees in that border and frankly, they've died. It just doesn't like it, but a more established tree has done really, really well. I think this year as well is where I definitely reflected on pot size. The very wet March we had um, was very different to the previous March where you could put a tree in as big a pot as you like and it did magnificently well because it just dried up too quickly almost the sun was amazing but this year caused some problems so these trees in the right size pots have done much much better and this year that really spawned, prompted a an investigation almost into what was causing a problem with my plants and uh, hence there's a video about what you know what can go wrong also learnings this year about uh, protecting plants from high winds or some some serious winds this month as well so you know putting bricks around it putting stakes in the ground to sort of anchor them stuff like that really or even in case of nurseries they kind of use wooden wooden beams and things like that they sort of put it in a wooden beam array to kind of keep things steady whatever works to be honest interesting too about this time of year a big lesson from 2023 really that people seem really interested in what their trees will become so i've done a series of, of videos and you can always go back through my the library of you know information that i've got really to have a look but uh, this is a Sangu Kako, which is the same tree as we saw earlier. I just think it's really interesting to see if you put things out and leave them for decades, kind of where they'll end up and what they'll be. But um, yeah, again, visiting arboretums, learn, learning to enjoy that really, and seeing ultimately what can happen. So you may remember the little Hagaramo tree that I bought uh, from Dorset. Well, I found an actual full-size version of it. So again, I've really enjoyed this year going out and, and hunting for trees that, that I already own or or just randomly finding them really. And it's just lovely to see what potential they have in the long run. And again, the Ukugumo that I showed you earlier, there's there's one out and about. And good to reflect, to be honest with you, I think mine looks far better than this. This is unprotected. It's out in quite an exposed position. So it just reinforces the, the idea that I'm doing the right thing really. And then as this uh, summer was very overcast and, and wet, really, and particularly the spring, but across the whole summer, really prompted my thoughts again to look at um, pot sizing and compost that I use. And I've absolutely come to the conclusion that you, you can't have a one size fits all scenario, to be honest. On balance, I think I'll still stick to my potting mix of 50% erasious compost and 50% uh, sort of mature plant compost. That does work really well but only in the right size pot so i had a lot of practice this year and an experimentation using different size pots and if you overpot them the roots get too damp this definitely causes a problem but let's say i used a load of pine bark and you know super drainage um, type compost the trouble is they would dry out that quickly on a sort of hot season this could be a real issue and, and cause a real problem so a lot of experimentation this year with um, seedlings that I'd been given, which is actually a really good idea. So seedlings are lovely, actually, but because I was given a handful for free of charge, then it was great to do a little bit of an experimentation with plants I hadn't necessarily uh, paid for, which is, all, which is all good. So moving through and on to August now, um, whizzing through the year at a, quite a pace, really. And, you know, everything's in sort of fine fettle in full flow, really. 
just a great time to get out there and and look at the trees how how they doing uh, are they getting burnt if they are let's take some action and and interestingly as well that uh, the tree in the top left hand uh, there the weeping one is has some lovely colors already and so do some of the other trees um but what we'll see is that some of those if they have a bit of an overdose of sun uh, have actually suffered for it later on in the year a little bit so it's great to see some lovely colors during the summer months but perhaps that's the, the detriment of really really good fall colors um, and i think we'll see later in the video that the trees that are actually more shade all year have actually done better um, particularly the sarkazuki type trees and that sort of thing than some of the others so and there's something else i learned this year and it's worked really well is by all means at this point in time um, put something in a pot but what I've done here really is made sure that the pot is very, very similar to the size of the tree that I'm fitting in it. Because I don't really want to load this up with compost and a load of nitrogen and that's going to cause a sort of massive growth, which is just going to die back in the winter really. But that, that tree's been fine. So, you know, it is at this point, I think, quite successful to, uh, to repot them. And uh, another bit of fun from 2023 that's... Uh, one of the uh, my viewers and subscribers had actually he been in touch to say that he'd found this Kalani in Matlock where I go to Packles uh, Farm Nursery, as you can see there. And and off I went and uh, managed to secure one, really. So this is a tree I'd seen a couple of years earlier at Western Burt and was really, really happy to, to be able to find that. And just going to, um, while I was there as well, just really looking around at the still magnificent collection of trees um Makai Yatsubusa there some sure swanums on the right just again a, a lovely time to sort of go and see what your trees will look like in the summer months where is let's face it you know autumn's fantastic spring's fantastic but the summer month is where they're going to stay uh, for most of their their life really another learning really that at this stage of the game the trees have been growing for you know most of a season so in a sense they're they're growing in value because you're getting more tree for your money um, but yeah, you can sort of start to see the shape and the form of them better and uh, have a better understanding of, of where they're heading, really. And by all means, you can buy really tiny trees, and that's absolutely fine. Um, I often do, but it's, it's just more difficult to see where they're going to end up, I suppose. And here's a Trompenberg I'd had for a year or two and never really understood why it, it isn't really going places. It just seems to be the same size every year, honestly. It seems to not move at all. But again, understanding this year about, you know, pot sizing and not, not over potting and taking that out and replacing it, that's made a, a substantial difference, really. And it was also at this time of year that I discovered um, a new place to go, Bluebell Nurseries in Ashby de la Zouche in the sort of Midlands of the UK. So again, it's always good to go out and look for new places to go and find um, more trees because I might see a tree that I already have like this Jordan and just reflect on how mine's doing and to sort of make learn some lessons there. But in other ways, I might find trees that I don't own and I don't write them down necessarily and make a note of them. But I've certainly learned this year that if you get out and about and make some good observations and somewhere in the back of your mind, something sticks. And a bit like the Kalani, really, it was two or three years later that I actually found the tree that I was looking for. And yeah, later on in the month, you can see here, while from a distance, this tree looks, you know, 100% OK. It's just starting to suffer a bit, really. Uh, well, not suffer, but... There, there is a bit of burning and browning the leaves. It's, it's going a bit too far. Um, and just like this little fellow here, really, sort of um, a similar, similar scenario. Nothing too deadly, nothing too, too much, too problematic. But this is the time to reflect and maybe, as I did, move that tree to a bit more shade, really, just to give it a helping hand. Whereas on the other hand, something like this Okashimo, which I don't know much about, should have done a bit more research, haven't, but in sort of pretty full light it just seems to thrive and do really really well so i'm always going out and i've just learned to kind of keep looking keep keep observing really and uh, make changes you know things aren't happy where they are well that's absolutely fine so on this like yukon here there's some sort of yellowing at the tips of the leaves and things aren't looking quite right really so by observing that i was able to take some corrective action and indeed i took the opportunity to remove it from its pot there if you remember I potted that earlier on in the year, you can still see the actual shape of the original pot. It just hasn't really grown into the compost um, around the tree because the roots are getting rotten. It's, it, was, it was too wet. It's, it's just not doing very well, really. 
So I decided at that point to sort of pot it down, put it into a smaller pot. And taking some great advice from some of the maple growers that I speak to, decided to put that into a pot that's sort of barely big enough to contain the root ball, to be honest with you, um, because that's the best way of kind of preserving things. And you say, looking at this side there, there's there's not like nice um, sort of light coloured, nice roots on it. It's sort of more brown. The roots are falling apart. It's, it's not done so well, really. And just continuing that theme, big lesson from this year is, you know, pot size is absolutely critical um particularly for, if it's a damp season to be honest with you and every season's different that's another massive massive learning this year was nothing like the year before which was an absolute scorcher of a summer so you've got to kind of cut your cloth both ways and take the middle ground to some degree and adapt things but as you can see there putting things in the right size pot's great if it's too small it could dry out like the one there so don't under pot it because that runs the risk you know everything being equal if i if i miss watering it once then that could be a major problem and then really lots more learnings into the month of september um this tree has this ray and it's just looks so beautiful it's done amazingly well and this is what i won't be moving because it just looks great where it is really um with morning sun and afternoon shade but just reflecting um that this year again this Wendy shows absolutely no sign of changing color really the this season was very very late indeed the asakizuki on the right in other years might start to do something quite spectacular by now but there's not much sign of anything happening in particular really so again it was a very sort of dull kind of wet summer but that season went on very very late into the year so you know the actual cutoff as far as the trees concerned between summer and autumn can vary by many many weeks so great big learning for this year really um, both in terms of like enjoying my own trees but planning visits out there's, there's no point booking a week off in the second week in October to go and see the maples in a lovely place that you know unfortunately for the particular year that you're in that may be either too early or too late so having a bit of flexibility flexibility really helps so a big learning for me this year is um, you know don't be a cultivar snob if there is such a thing um, these little seedlings are really interesting um, they were free you know, absolutely, why not, really? But it's particularly in the early days of, of, of growing maples, even though they're seedlings and they're pretty tough, if you put them in the wrong conditions, they, they're going to do badly. So I've got all of those, and we'll see how they progress over next year and beyond, really. So if you do enjoy these videos, I hope that, that, that works well for you so we can keep referring back to some of my trees and see how they progress. Um, indeed, so you'll sort of see progress, um, how your own will progress in future months, really. So this is Asus Sharon and again looks pretty much like it's done all year at this point. Re you know, really quite surprising because you'd expect some sort of colour change. But also it's it's interesting that the, the maples that, uh, that had exposure to sun during the year were much more advanced. Um, this one down the side of the house, which is my orange dream, has put an immense amount of late growth, um, which by now would be sort of, sort of more finalised and hardening off really. But, but indeed, it's amazing how, how much a big growth spurt happened this year. And uh, as you can see, that that's really quite considerable. That's probably more than it put on during the spring months, to be honest with you. So again, just reinforcing that every year is kind of different. So as we head into October now, which is typically a really, really good month for maples, you can see the peonies there behind in the pot behind have actually gone over. Um, and yet, me little Okashimo here, which I love, uh, just starting to see vague signs of change. Whereas the Katsura here, because of the summer sun, um, seems really, really advanced. I think the sun sort of dries the leaves out and sort of brings the the autumn forwards, in a sense, relative to other trees that don't get so much sun. Um, the Coralinum here out and about, still a great time of year. The, the weather's really quite mild, actually, um, to go see things, how they're progressing. I don't know why, I just find it kind of reassuring to see that, that other trees are in the same boat, I suppose, really. And this um, firecracker is a super tree, but again, isn't really performing at this stage as you'd expect. But yes, we can start now in sort of the mid-October to start to see some changes going on. Um, this is Jordan, um, which did really, really well. It's had a lot of shade, which I know it needs. A little bit of burning of some of the leaves on the top, but absolutely beautiful um, and, and more advanced. The surest one was generally either with me or out and about were more advanced. But yes, as we head towards the end of October here, 
you can see that as you'd expect really um, the trees absolutely looking at their best but the, the season was really very short so it was time to go out and and look and you know get out there because within weeks days really some trees have gone from not having much of a color change to to losing their leaves entirely so i'm glad i took advantage so finally here in the uk um, we're into november which first time i've experienced this was better really for looking at uh, aces in general um lovely to see some full colors at last and you can start to see the structure of the trees looking lovely again a great lesson for me was the fact that you've got trees like this okashimo which is not renowned for autumn color but uh, done really really well actually i think that's really pretty whereas uh as indeed the sharon here as well um, lovely different color tones oranges reds just just looking lovely was actually the Kalani, which I was very, very hopeful about, um, wasn't really quite so good. This is another tree which looks absolutely stunning, to be honest with you, out and about. So again, always good to look, but I can't reiterate enough that it, my lesson is that you've got to be flexible, you know, have your, your, your walking shoes handy because the season can be so different, and in this case, quite short, really. Uh, other trees like the Sangukaku, which we saw earlier in the garden, because of the more exposure to sun etc it's just so much more advanced um, and then on the other hand you've got the tree that's in the ground because i think that's another learning as well when they're in the ground they seem to be behind my potted trees um, but as you can see that looks like it's a sort of october sort of type situation but it's uh, far far later than that really uh, a little bit of burning on the leaves there but uh, the leaves inside are still really quite green to be honest with you but nonetheless um lovely color changes this orange dream uh, lovely tree really another learning from me as well or what i've learned is that uh, certain trees are consistent in in some respects so this shishigashira um the lion's mane maple every year it seems to be one of the last ones to lose its leaves one of the last ones to change color and i did do one or two videos just looking at um, the december months in basically tidying the trees up making sure they're prepared for winter and in this case, because it was a new tree, just leave it in some pebbles to make sure the drainage is great. So thanks so, so much for all those that have joined the channel and watched my videos throughout the year. It's uh, really, really appreciated. And I do hope you'll continue that journey with me into 2024. If I can be of any help to you, then that's absolutely fine. Please let me know. And uh, we'll enjoy Japanese maples together through another year. Take care and a really happy new year to you.